<laughs> I have a secret to share with all of you. It is a very well-kept secret, and by sharing it now, I am taking a risk. However, I hope to share it so poetically that this security breach will alarm no one and be celebrated by most. Here is the secret. There is a place in this world where the people share such a powerful and positive energy that I swear it powers the streetlights. This is a place that neither moves too quickly nor too slowly. The buildings are not too high and the air is not too still. And the streets are not too dirty. People hold doors for each other, not because they have to, but because they'd like to. People share their coins and their meals with those who are hungry. And there is a man in this place who stands on the street and sings as many different songs as you can load on your iPod. There is another man who lives above a busy street, and he blows bubbles out his window and giggles with the people who encounter them below. In this place, there are celebrations every weekend. They celebrate art, music, dance, food, sports, and every single person's heritage. There is an enormous bridge leading into the city. As you travel over it, you encounter the most breathtaking scene. To the left, a vast lake lined by the bright, twinkling lights of a completely different country. There are grand, white, wind-catching statues that line the edge of the water. To the right, stadiums, cheering and fireworks and crowds of happy people. And if you look further, you can see the remarkable architecture that tells stories about the history of a nation. But forget all that. The true magic of this place is the way that it welcomes people and the way that it sends them off. People born in this place often take it for granted. I did. As they grow, they become eager to leave. And the city sends them off with a smile and a gift. Young adults go off looking for adventure and quickly learned why the city smirked at them as they left, because of the secret. The city makes a promise to every person that leaves. It promises them that they will find other people all over the world that too left the magic place looking for adventure. And yet they find comfort and true adventure in each other as they laugh together and share stories about that magic place. That place is their home, and it always will be. People come and go, but the people who experience it do not easily forget how they felt while they were there. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this magic city is the way that other people talk about it. A lot of outsiders, if you will, poke fun at it. This makes it all much more fantastic. We do not share our magic with those negative Nancys and <clears throat> certain quarterbacks. Now, this place is certainly not perfect, as no place can be. But the magic comes from the people, the people that believe that it is the most perfectly imperfect place on the planet. As a proud resident of the magic city that smells of Cheerios, I encourage all of you to visit. There is no greater place than the home of the Peace Bridge, the chicken wings, and the hopeful, proud, polite sports fans of Buffalo, New York. I'm Adrian. I am 22 years old. I'm here today as a representative of the Jane Goodall Institute and the Institute's youth program, Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots. But I'm also here as a proud member of my young generation. I'm happy to boast a colorful resume, but I like to say that my greatest strength is not reflected on my resume. And that is my pride and my love for Buffalo, New York. What you just heard was something that I wrote on my blog when I moved back home after living away for several months. So thank you for letting me share it with you. Today I'm going to talk about some of the work that the Jane Goodall Institute does, some of the work that I've done with Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots, and more importantly, how these experiences have inspired me to take a closer look at our community. And I hope I inspire you to do the same. In Eastern Africa, the Jane Goodall Institute uses participatory community mapping to gather information about how villages are structured. Community maps are built by villagers themselves, 
and they're used to access the resources that are available in a community, but also to look at the resources that are missing. So creating a map sometimes means bringing the whole village together to draw the boundaries of an area on the ground. So people will use local materials and resources to build this visual representation of their community. They will identify areas of importance for people, animals, and the environment. So for example, in this picture, the stones might represent where animals are kept, the leaves might represent protected forests or other green spaces, and the paths in the dirt might represent the path of a river or the path of a road. So this visual representation of their community provides a realistic diagram for them to take a look at the things that are working within their community and the things that affect their community. But it also allows for a unique opportunity for storytelling, stories that penetrate space and time. So people can come together and talk about how the protected forest came to be protected. Was it affected by human encroachment? Is it used as a sacred space? So this is a way for people to come together and be creative when they make this map, but also to talk about their community. So with a tangible map to look at, some, com some community members are identified as forest monitors. So these forest monitors are equipped with Google Android phones, and they'll go out into the field to take high resolution images. So they can actually go out into the forest and take a picture of where firewood is collected. Or they can take a picture when they have an interaction with another animal or with the local wildlife. So in some cases, forest monitors are able to use these Google Android phones to take pictures and mark GPS points that when illegal activity is taking place, they can show these pictures and GPS points to village governments so that proper change can be enacted. For example, illegal logging. So the Jane Goodall Institute then uses this information to facilitate land use planning and this allows them to make sure that their plan will enable these areas of importance for people, animals, and the environment to always be protected. The environment will always be conserved, people will always have food, and the animals will always be safe. And sharing information between villages that build community maps allows for an incredible network, especially next to protected forests, because the Jane Goodall Institute, as many of you may know, is interested particularly in chimpanzees. Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots is the Institute's youth program founded by Dr. Jane Goodall. This is where I work. So the Jane Goodall Institute uses community mapping in the same way that I just explained. Young people will come together and use local materials to build a map of their communities. So of course, young people in the United States have more materials at their fingertips. They can use markers, crayons, stickers, but they can also use twigs and leaves from outside, and they will, will, they will build their map in the same way that the, the villagers in Tanzania build their maps. So this is a map built by a Roots and Shoots youth leader from Harrisonburg, Virginia. You'll see that she's identified areas of importance for people. So she's identified the library, she's identified a university in her town, the place where she buys her groceries. She's identified areas of animal importance. She's put a, a cat sticker where the SPCA is, and there's local animal shelters. And she's identified areas of environmental importance. So she's drawn the mountain range, and she's identified the watershed. This is a picture from when I did the community mapping workshop in Copacabana, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This young lady lives on Copacabana Beach. So this beach is a heavily visited tourist area. Everywhere you turn, you can buy a t-shirt, you can buy sunglasses, and you can buy sandals. And she lives in this community. So what she decided was missing from her community was access to freshly grown produce. So she put together a, a vision and a mission for her community where her home is that would allow for farmers to bring their fresh produce into the Copacabana community 
and that way her family would have access to these materials. So Roots and Shoots is about inspiring young people to realize that they are the leaders of today. Too often, young people, including myself, hear that we are the leaders of tomorrow, but I think we, we know better. We know that we can make change today, and some of the things we heard today hopefully have, has convinced you as well. So we remind young people with the community mapping process that we are the experts of our community. Nobody knows our community as well as we do. So why shouldn't we be the ones to build a map and ask ourselves, what's missing? So we here might not be members of village government in Tanzania, and we might not be young people in a Roots and Shoots group, but we are the change makers of Buffalo, New York. We are the experts of our community. And today, with your help, we are gonna take a look at a community map of Buffalo, New York. I'm gonna pull up areas of importance for humans, for animals, and for the environment, and then we're gonna ask ourselves what's missing? What can we do to make change in our community? So this is our cross section of Buffalo. Normally, if you were to build a map of your community, you would look at a smaller space. You would identify where your home is, where your school or your work is, and those would be your boundaries because that's the commute that you make every day. That's the area that you know best. So today, since we have people from all over the city and the suburbs, we're gonna take a look at the whole city of Buffalo. The first thing we're going to do is identify areas of human importance. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so these are the, the points that I've chosen as important for me concerning humans. I've identified the Peace Bridge because this is, exists, this powerful connection exists between us and our neighbors to the north. I've identified the waterfront because we know some incredible changes are happening along the waterfront. I've identified City Hall because that's where our representatives make decisions for our community. The Buffalo Zoo because that's where I like to go to connect with my family and my friends. The Outer Harbor because we know that the Buffalo Sabres are going to be developing the Outer Harbor. And Delaware Park because this is a place that people go to relax and either be with themselves or be with their friends and family. Other things that we can identify for human importance are grocery stores, hospitals, schools, public transportation, libraries, and the list goes on. Next, we're gonna talk about areas of animal importance. So here, I've identified Delaware Park. Again, this is where we can, we can see and interact with local wildlife. And there's also a dog park there for us to interact with our pets. Tift Nature Preserve, where migratory birds visit, where we can see all kinds of animals. The, <laughs> I've identified Forest Lawn Cemetery here because people who either go to school or, or work at Canisius College know that there's a, a resident deer family living in, in Forest Lawn Cemetery. Um, the lake. And I've identified Gate Circle here because I've heard a rumor that there's going to be a vet hospital and school at Gate Circle. So other things that we can identify, areas of animal importance, are shelters, SPCAs, animal hospitals, things of that sort. Next, we're going to talk about areas of environmental importance. So here, again, Tift Nature Preserve is a protected environmental area just outside the city. I've identified the lake. Along the bottom, you can see I've identified the wind turbines and the water purification systems that exist along the lake. Other things that, that are important for our environment are any green space, any space where the plants and the trees are allowed to thrive without human, without human interaction. So let's go back and pull up the map with everything on it and see what it looks like. Oh, that was it, really quick. Okay, so these are, like I said, these are my areas of importance. So it's a very busy map. There's a lot going on. 
because our city has a lot to offer. And by now, I hope you know what I think of our city. I think it's perfect, perfectly imperfect. So it's my favorite place in the world, but even I know that there are things that need to be changed. There are things that can be better. So whether it's air quality, pollution, water quality, or public transportation, our city needs help. And you guys are the ones to do it. Because like I said, everyone in this, in this room is a change maker of our city. We are the ones with the big ideas. And the person next to you has a big idea too. Each of us has a gift and a talent, and all of us has a responsibility to make sure that our voice is heard, to make sure that we ask ourselves, what's missing from my community? Because we know our community best, and we are the ones who can make positive change happen in our own backyards. So I ask you now, as you leave today, and you've heard about the incredible things all day long, you've heard about incredible things that are happening. Support one of these ideas. Embark on your own adventure. But be the change you wish to see in our city. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.